Yo, what's going on guys? Hackapuckle here, bringing you another 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross video. For this, be going over UR gear and talking about when they were released on JP. And we're going to be talking about them in detail. I did go over this in my news video last night, link to that up there if you did not see it. I'll be going over specifically UR gear and how they're being released on the Japanese version and what happened on JP so you can give you an idea of what to expect going forward. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I compiled a list for you guys of all the characters with UR gear and when they got their UR gear releases. And if you didn't know, they were all spread out between many of the different dates here. And uh, this, I'm gonna put this link of this spreadsheet in the description below so you have access to it later. And apparently, as you can see, it's uh, it's it's being hella weird because like the first two characters that got released were Meliodas and Alioni, and then after that was Guilt Under Golgius. Then following that, it was Elizabeth Twigo, and then the, they said, you know what? Uh, there was a problem. The major problem was what every two weeks we get two characters. It was going way too slow. So people were like, oh, can you speed this up, please? And there was a huge outcry from the JP community saying, can you speed it up? They said, okay, we'll double the speed. And uh, after that point, they started releasing much more characters. As you can see, the next wave was with six different characters. We got Bond, Deanne, Jericho, Jude, Frieza, and Ruin. I'm not sure about Ruin, but uh, we did find it on the list. So well, hopefully, but we didn't have it in the uh, Reddit patch notes, but it is here. Um, uh, then after that, we had Gila, King, and Elaine. And then following that, Galen, Belascula, Monspeed, and Luxinia. Going past that, we're going to have Bellion. Uh, we had the actual, we had the collaboration event around this time, too. This, before we go into Gila, King, and Elaine, uh, there was actually, the, this is when the training cave got changed uh, around 12 2. So the training cave, uh, what used to be every three days, you used to be going to the training cave and uh, be able to get purple stones. And then they said, you know what, we're to, to lessen the burden on players, what we will do is increase the amount of time on training cave from three days until five days to give you guys a little bit more breathing room so that you have more time to just do everything. So it was a lot easier after it moved to five days and with the similar amount of rewards. It was slightly less, slightly more, depending on how lucky you were and uh it was a good and bad change so i mean i i kind of liked it and i kind of didn't like it you got less hammers i believe or you got more hammers but less uh, purple stones so it was hit and miss um then there was um after this point this is where we started seeing some major changes for commandments and this is right after when red eskinor was released red eskinor released right in here uh, then we have on, around this time frame when I oh, was on 115. This is when we got a um, the movie collaboration event, and this is for the Seven of the Sins movie where Bellion and Alot got released as, at the same time. These two units, I believe, are on the part two banner. Uh, they're not in the part one banner, and I think Bellion's a part one. I don't actually know. I, I still don't have Bellion on JP. I don't know why. I just cannot pull him. He's on part two, right? I don't actually know. Um, then we got Lilia and Valenti. This is the one right here for Lilia and Valenti. They, they took a very long time after the release. This right here is around uh, Meliodas released up here, uh, and Lilia was actually released around the same time frame. Uh, it was like a bit week before where we had um, Lilia. So this is the time frame when Meliod Lilia was released. The round here is where a little bit a week after this was when Valenti was released, and. I'm oh, sorry, no, we have this. Uh, we get, uh, this is when Valenti was released. Sorry, I get that wrong. So this is Lilia. This is Valenti release. And you can see how long on the Japanese version it took to get their UR gear. So um, there's a huge gap in between that. And then King got his UR gear. This is a this is the hugest problem on JP for the longest time, is that King having his UR gear was a huge, huge problem. Um, Bond was also released with UR gear on 12.3. This actually released something. It's a whole new different PvP meta called Bond Pen. And... Um, Around the time of Valenti, Valenti was a very prominent meta for all the way until Red Esquinos released right about here. This is where Bon Pen was reigning supreme. And Bon Pen is basically blue Meliodas with green Nunchuck Bon as well as blue Lilia. And the lack backline unit can be Hauser, it could be Eskinor, it could be any different unit. There are many different units people ran in the backline in order to just boost their damage. Uh, Hauser in the backline, if he came in, will be another Pierce unit you would see on the team, which would be huge because if Bon died, you get another Pierce unit and that's huge against the enemy team. Eskinor coming in uh, very late is also very strong, very scary to have to come in. Very good. And the reason Bon Pen was a very, very strong team is really good again, as a blue Meliodas team, as a counter to a, Lil uh, a Valenti composition and the reason it's so good is because the big thing that a valenti composition does is it reduces a lot of the damage that you take well with a bond team you're reducing the defense of the enemy teams making it so that they take a lot more damage making it so that the pierce damage will do more damage as well as the uh the bond will do more damage so there's a lot of damage being spread out with those uh, those bond fan teams uh, if we go into 
The other teams, uh, the other thing here, King became a huge, huge meta unit and stayed a meta unit from uh, 1217 on. He wasn't really in the meta too much except for Kingbrim teams for this portion of time. That was the only thing he was really good at for a long time. And then when he got UR gear, uh, Kingbrim teams got a resurgence. Different meta teams came out with Merlin as well as King, Alt Rush, and uh, people are doing a lot of different things at this point. This is where H uh, if you have a full UR set with HP and defense on King, uh, a lot of the time we're talking from this point on for like maybe three, four months, King was able to one shot entire enemy teams uh, by himself with full HP and defense UR gear. And it was a very, very strong unit to fight against. So this is this was a huge meta breaker, uh, meta changing thing uh, for ultimate rush teams. And the, the trifecta of teams at this point uh, going going into the meta was there was Pierce compositions which were really good against uh, the ulti rush teams with King. The King teams were really good. Uh, the ulti rush teams were really good against Valenti compositions, and Valenti compositions were good against um, the Pierce comps. So it was a tri it was a trifecta of ultimate teams, and it was just three different types of teams that you saw in PvP all the time. Uh, then we go down to G Galen, Melascula, Monsby, and Gloxinia. This didn't really change anything. There was no meta-breaking thing. There was no good Mo Galen at this point. There's no good Melascula at this point. No real good Monsby or Gloxinia at this point. None of these were changer game changers. Bellion a lot. They didn't really change a lot. Lilia and Valenti getting UR gear also did not change a lot of things because Lilia was already strong without UR gear and Valenti was also strong without Valenti without UR gear. And Valenti getting her UR set after the release of Red Escanor really made it so that Valenti UR gear was kind of unnecessary. More people would focus on Blue Lilia at this point. So Valenti got her UR gear much too late for it to even matter. And um, even with the UR set nowadays, I, I've tried it against Red Escanor teams. You can't do nullify enough damage. You can nullify Valenti's. Uh, you can nullify, nullify every Lilia even without UR gear. So it's not even necessary to get the UR gear for Valenti. I, I tried it with both ways, and you know it, it wasn't a waste. I, I have fun with the UR gear, but you know it's not like the it's not the most efficient play to go with the UR Valenti. UR Lilia though, um, I do have it now, and it is a nice stat booster, but it doesn't really improve your whole team comp a lot it does improve your healing a lot which is really nice so uh getting bigger heals is good out of this but you don't really get any extra damage or any extra viability out of a ur lilia besides more health and more cc um going into the rest set next set here we have slater weinhardt hugo and jillian coming out late in january this didn't really help a lot either there was nothing there was a huge time gap here everything everybody and their grandma would from the point of and like uh, point this point on was actually just saving for um <laughs> Everybody was saving for Escanor. Like once Red Escanor came out, everybody was starting to save UR gear stones for Escanor, Merlin, and Gother. And there was, like, if you're free to play or budget player, I mean, it's you're saving at this point. Uh, with UR gear, you only get one enough for one piece of UR gear for free to play every five days. Which if you do five days times six pieces, that's thirty days. So one uh, one full UR set per month. So it does get it does take some time to build these UR sets. Um, Estorosa was released on the 29th of January, and this was a huge character for a lot of people. They did want to play with this character it was very very fun but unfortunately it didn't last very long uh hauser got his ur gear on the on the 5th of um of february and this is very late late into the ur meta I see meliodas being released on the 28th of uh october over almost uh, i'd say about two months over two months after the actually more than that more than uh sorry four months oh no three months three months, oh yeah three months only three and a half months i'd say after the release of Meliodas, Hauser gets his UR gear finally. So this is where Pierce is getting kind of stale already and not a lot of people want to focus on Hauser UR gear, especially after Red Escanor's release and there's a lot of other characters to use. And Red Escanor is actually a better character on a Pierce composition in general than using Hauser, which is really annoying at this point. Um, then we got Griamore, Hendrickson, Dreyfus, and Gustav, and Vivian. And this is actually a really interesting UR gear set, this one for Griamore. This actually changed the Korean meta a little bit, but it didn't actually change the JP meta at all. Uh, if you didn't know, the Japanese meta didn't really focus on Griamores. There there was very, very, very few red SR Griamores in the Japanese meta, but there was a lot in the Korean meta. And this actually changed the Korean meta. I saw a lot more teams change a lot more often with the uh, red SR Griamore. There were some really fun teams I did see out of this, and there was a lot of CC out of this. And uh, Griamore has a ridiculous amount of CC, so that it does help out a lot. Um, the rest of these characters, though, they were pretty useless. Dreyfus was really annoying to see as a UR gear set because when Dreyfus got his UR set, there was something else coming out later that's, that annoyed me that was for Dreyfus getting a UR set. Uh, we got Zaneri and Jenna coming out. This is where their sets came out. We have, um, I believe, I think it was Elaine. Elaine. 
But when Elaine got hers on the seventh here with King, uh, then we got Jenna and Zaneri coming out on the Valentine's banner. This is when this came out on, on the Valentine's banner. She also, had, since she already had her UR set, this is where Zaneri and Jenna came out and got their UR sets. They were the characters for cosmetics that you get for increasing cosmetic upgrades. This is the cosmetic upgrade section. This is specifically when we started getting these more often. So definitely annoying there. Then we got uh, the release of Derriere as well as uh, Arthur getting UR gear. This is where Derriere was released and Arthur getting his UR gear happened. Um, as you can see, right after Estorosa, we go right into Valentine's Banner and then Derriere. And then immediately following this is Global Launch. And immediately following that was the Las Vegas Meliodas Banner. So Las Vegas Meliodas Banner comes in around this time frame, I believe. Uh, so there, there, there is like this. I think it was around here actually. There's a huge like amount of pulling that's going on here for Derriere, Estorosum, um, Jenna, and Zaneri. Just like a massive amount of pulls for characters that you don't really need. Derri that's why Derriere was kind of like an annoying banner to pull on for a lot of people because once you like if you just had pulled specifically for the Valentine's banner, so you can get your increased cosmetic upgrades. Many people did not have resources to pull for maxed out Derrieres, and that was a very very problematic thing, especially after the Esserosa banner, etc. So um, the the reason many uh, many people on the Seven Deadlies Reddit said that Esserosa is kind of a skip and they're not very not not a good character is because of where he was positioned in these banners and exactly what what happened during this time frame so th this is a huge like different thing that you may not know about about the uh, japanese player base and how we got released and stuff then after that we had um merlin's release on ur gear this one was a big one this is i put on merlin showcase this is a day after global launch i was like oh shit merlin got ur gear pog so um, i was extremely excited about that and we have the release of the easton banner and the mono banner these are the two new units um easton is a basically blue version of helbrum's buff it's a very very good unit in general so definitely work uh, work on her if you get her uh, we also have the release of Helbrum gear, UR gear. This is right after global launch. Uh, and Helbrum getting UR gear, didn't, you didn't really see a big resurgence into the meta. He, we did, uh, I saw him for about a week, but he wasn't like a big amount of, it wasn't like a huge amount of Helbrums that I saw at that time. I did see him for a couple of people. And there are people that are using UR Helbrum. But the problem with Helbrum getting UR gear is that it was right around the same time, as you can see here, this is where Lost Vane Meliodas came out on the 25th. Um, where Fraudrin got UR gear, and this is why I was really kind of annoyed by uh, Dreyfus getting UR gear and Fraudrin getting UR gear, because they do not share gear, share gear sets, even though they have the same character portrait, and even though they're not the same quote-unquote character, they are the same quote-unquote character. That's kind of annoying to me to see Dreyfus and UR and Fraudrin have not the same, you know, UR set. But, you know, it is what it is. No one's ever going to, you know, work on a Dreyfus UR set and a Fraudrin UR set, except for Kaboki. Because he goes, you know, Chef Dreyfus is a bail ding, you know. <laughs> um, so Gother getting his UR set all, all the way down here in the 25th here. You can see how long it took for the Sins to get their their UR sets. And then immediately following that, we have Escanor. So um, I actually was able to get all three of these UR sets. But the, the huge problem was that for about three months here, I was not able to UR anything because I was just saving all my UR sets for these three characters. And actually what's really annoying is about this Eskimo late release on the UR set is this is actually one of my biggest regrets as far as UR pieces go as far as when I did it because after this point when I got Eskimo UR gear this actually did not help me in PvP. It did not help me anywhere in the game. This was just like the only thing I got out of this was that Crimson Demons were marginally easier and uh, helping me in PvP was very limited. So I'm not sure if I would say that this particular UR set was my my favorite UR release because of how late it was. If you if you got UR gear, say, up here or like uh, it, much earlier on, it would have been way better. But the fact that it got so late and, and Lost Vane Meliodas had taken over the meta at that point, it, it became like this thing where it wasn't, like you didn't even need UR gear for es for Escanor. And there's there are some green Escanors that we see in PvP right now, and there are some red Escanors we see in PvP, but the, when he came out with UR gear, it was really annoying. And uh, I'm very annoyed that I didn't get to use him enough in PvP for the UR set build. Gother having UR set, obviously you're always gonna be able to use a Gother unless they come out with something that's an upgraded version of a Gother, which is great. Um, Merlin, I, a lot of people do use her, and this is this is going on. Then we had Roxy, Zeldris, Zar, and Zartra, Shin, and Matrona coming out, and of course after that is the most present day stuff. But we haven't got any new UR sets because there haven't been any new re released characters um, since the 20th of last month. So these are all the characters that we have for UR gear, what the release dates are, what the Japanese meta kind of shifted for, uh, and everything there. And hopefully this video has helped you guys understand the release order for characters and how it has shifted the PvP meta in Japan. Um, 
overall, one of the one of the things I wished that would have happened differently was the, this clutter release order of Merlin, Gother, and Escanor a uh, UR gear. I wish the had, this had come much earlier because there was a whole, there was a this massive section of time where there's nothing to work on for UR gear except for maybe a Derriere, but that happened right before Merlin's UR set, as you can see here. And there's almost no one to work on for this whole time frame except for Lilia and Valenti. And working on a Lilia UR set might have been better for me many months ago, but at the same time, I like, at, you weren't really sure what set would be best for a Lilia because you weren't sure if a green Lilia would be the prep priority unit where you can go and attack defense build with a Valenti comp. You weren't really sure if you could go with a Lilia build for a blue Lilia build for HP and defense with a Pierce world set. It was very, very up in the air as what the best UR set for, for blue Lilia would be. And um, lately, I, I actually recently just got my Lilia set done and I finally concretely know which one which way I want to go and I'll go over that in a separate video as well. All right, guys, my name is Sekapoko. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys enjoyed it, why am I lagging so much? All right, guys, my name is Seiko Poco. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Of course, if you guys did enjoy the video, like and subscribe, all the fun stuff. If you guys do want more videos like this about JP shift changes, what happened in JP versus what can happen in global, where the UR goes to of course, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys want to know more about in the future. And of course, I do have a video that will be coming out later week regarding the comment from the, the previous video saying you wanted to see the efficiency of farming for free to play versus a pay to play farming set. So I'll give you the ideas of what you can expect between both of those. So you'll have that. But again, thank you for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye.